Hello, good afternoon. This is Brother Mark Forrester. Thank God for another Bible study evening where we can look into the Word of God and refresh our minds and refresh our thoughts on one of the most famous name in the Bible, Adam. And the Bible tells us that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And during the course of that process, God also created the first human man known to us as Adam. So before I get into that, I just want to say thank you to my pastor. Pastor Michael Bacchus for such an honor and privilege to be able to share another Bible study evening with you. Thank you for the leaders and um, in our church at large. Thank you for both the Queens and Brooklyn campuses. Let us pray. Father and God, we thank you for this moment. We pray God today that in the midst of those that are going through, Lord, those that are sick, those that are bereaved. Father God, we pray that you would, even in the midst of all of these things, Lord, you would, oh Father God, open our eyes and our ears and hear what the Spirit of the Lord have to say to us. Father God, continue to give us the ability to read and study your words so that we can show ourselves approval unto you. Thank you, in Jesus' name. So who was Adam? Where did he come from? And um, uh, just a little bit about his background. There's a whole lot that we can go into where Adam is concerned, uh, but we're just going to touch the surface here today. Um, I am not going to promise you that I can explore the entire background of Adam, but just to share a little bit uh, for the purpose of this Bible study evening. Let's call this a little bit of a discussion. According to Genesis 1, um, in uh, verses 26, through to 31, let's read that real quick. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let us, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And behold, and God said, Behold, I have gotten, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in which it is fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat in other words food and to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life i have given green herb for meat and it was so and god saw everything that he had made and behold was very good 
and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So we see here that God created man on the sixth day during his process of creation. Eventually he got to man. So who was Adam? As mentioned in the book of Genesis, the first man, as Adam was created by God, God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life. And the man became a living soul. And this is according to Genesis 2.7. Therefore, Adam was created from the earth, the soil of the ground, which is actually reflected, or it's actually reflected in his name, meaning man, right? The meaning of, of Adam, the name man, the first human being. So leading into Adam's birth, as we read, God created him on the sixth day, according to the book of Genesis in chapter 2. Uh, uh, 26 through 31. And in fact, chapter 1, 26 through 31. However, we can see that um, Based on science, um, we've learned that there's a variation of, sci of scientific analysis that actually focuses um, on, on reliable molecular clock. And what they found based on this molecular clock that scientists uses to trace genes in DNAs, uh, they discovered that Adam lived between 120,000 to 156,000 years ago. A comparable analysis on the same man's DNA sequences suggested that Eve lived between 99,000 and 148,000 years ago, according to Nature International Weekly Journal of Science. What they're saying here, from the time Adam was born, his DNA spanned between 120,000 years to 156,000 years. His, his DNA can be traced towards that span. Also, we see, according to the analysis in the DNA uh, sequences, that Eve lived, her DNA lived between um, 99,000 and 148,000 years ago according to this Journal of Science. So uh, another thing I learned through this brief study was that from the time Adam was born, the human race started counting from zero, right? So between Adam and Noah, there were 10 generations, and between Noah and between Shem, which is right after Noah, between Shem and Abraham, there's another 10 generations. So we see between Adam and Abraham, they're all together 20 generations. Amen? Last to digest here. So, um, we see that after God 
created Adam and Eve, but mostly starting with Adam, um, God put them, God put him in the garden for a specific purpose, right? And um, his function there was to tend to the garden. His function mainly was to tend to the garden. He was actually the gardener. Amen. And it turns out that God gave him special sets of instructions while he was there in the garden. And also, we can read here in, in Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 through 25, it reads, And the Lord said, It is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would name them or what he would call them. So we see after God created Adam, he placed Adam in the garden. The Garden of Eden was his home. And so his purpose there was to tend to that garden. And it says here, and out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the field and he brought them to Adam and Adam named them, right? If it was a lion or a sheep or a cow or whatever the name of the animal, he gave names to these animals. And Adam gave names to cattle, fowls of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help me for him. So now we're getting into the other half of Adam. And it says here, and the Lord, this is Genesis chapter 2, verses 21, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof, and the rib which the Lord had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto man and Adam said this is bone of my bones flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man so we see Adam named all the animals that God created and brought to him and now out of his own body, his rib, God created the woman, brought the woman to Adam, and Adam, right away, he summarizes, this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman, the opposite of man. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh so we see the unity of a woman and a man based coming out from creation the way god intended it he created the man from the earth from the dust and the bible tells us that he breathed into man's nostril the breath of life so man was born physically birthed 
God shaped and formed and molded him with his hands and breathed the breath of life into him and he became a living soul and out of his flesh out of his bone he created a woman and the purpose God created them for was that they would be together they shall be one flesh because they were made out of one flesh they now can be a unit as opposed to two separate entities amen and they were both naked and man and his wife were not ashamed after God created them they were in the garden discovered that they were naked and they were not ashamed but as the story continues um, they fell they actually fell it's amazing that God always have a backup plan and we discovered according to uh, learn religion God put two important trees in the garden uh, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and of evil Adam's duty was clear God told him to tend to the garden and not to eat of the fruit of these two trees he would surely die the day that he would do that Adam passed that warning on to Eve same instructions God gave to him he warned his wife that she should not eat of these two trees in the garden then Satan enter into the picture Satan enter into the garden disguised as a snake as a serpent as the Bible called it he did what he's still doing today deception disguise the accuser of the brethren that's what the devil that's his mission is to take us out get us to disobey God so you will not surely die the serpent said unto the woman for God knows that when you eat of this fruit your eyes will be open and you will be like God knowing good and evil this is according to Genesis chapter 3 so now instead of believing God taking God at his word Eve chose to believe Satan she ate of the fruit he gave to her husband and they both ate scripture says that their eyes were both open and as their eyes were open they discovered that they were naked prior to this moment they were naked and it was just a natural thing a natural phenomenon right they weren't even aware that they were naked because it was so natural but now after they have eaten the fruit they discovered that they were naked However, God cast them out of the Garden of Eden. From time to time, the Bible records, or in fact, uh, God invoked curses on Satan, Eve, and Adam. God could have destroyed Adam and Eve but out of his grace 
out of his love. He killed animal. He killed a set of animals. Took the clothes or the covering from the animals, and he protected uh, Adam and Eve after they had discovered that they were naked. From time to time, the Bible records the sad history, human dis disobedience, human constantly disobeying God. But God always have a backup plan. And we see here in this situation, God had a backup plan and that backup plan was the plan of salvation. And, and this was actually in place before the foundations of the world. He responded to the fall of man, a savior and redeemer, redeemer through his son, Jesus. And we learned that um, in the book of, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we see the plan of God into action. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we can find that scripture from verses 42, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruptible or in corruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown in natural body, it is raised in spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. So we see that Adam was born of a natural body and Christ was born of a spiritual body. So we see we have the first Adam and we have the second Adam, according to this scripture here in 2 Corinthians. And it says here, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made in a living soul, and the last Adam, which is Christ, was made in a quickening spirit. So we see Adam was born natural, right? And we see Christ was born spiritual. Albeit, that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterwards, that which is spiritual. So, here, the scripture seems to be contradicting itself. We know that God's word never contradicts itself. It's saying here, why shouldn't it be the other way around? Why, why didn't Adam born as spiritual and Christ, this birth seems to be more of a natural birth, but we know otherwise that uh, Mary was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, the first man is often is of the earth, earthy, and the second man is of the Lord from heaven. Right? So we see the distinction here. As the earthy, such as also are the earthy, and as is the heavenly, such are they also 
that are heavenly. So whatever is born earthy, this particular verse is saying, then it's earthy. What is born spiritually now is spiritual. So we see that when we born, the Bible says we, we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. That's our natural born, right? But as Christ comes into the picture, he, through God's grace, through the plan of God, even though Adam and Eve fell, God uh, prepared a redemption plan through Christ, through Jesus, and take us from death to life. Amen? And we know that also Adam had sons, Cain, Abel, Seed, had a couple of daughters, but we also found out that according to the old tradition, according to Bible scholars, that uh, Adam altogether, Adam and Eve altogether had about 33 sons and about 23 daughters, a total of about 56 children. Now the Bible did not give us a clear picture of that, but I guess these are some historical facts uh, uh, that are relating to uh, the birth uh, and nature of Adam and Eve. So as I close, as I wind this down, um, let's look at the first Adam and the second Adam as we read in in Second Corinthians, uh, uh, chapter fifteen and verses forty two through forty five, we can notice a couple of things in contrast when you look at the first Adam and the second Adam. One of the things we discovered is that the first Adam was created of the earth, while the second Adam, Jesus, came from heaven. Right. The first Adam sin. The second Adam, Jesus, committed no sin. Through, through, uh, though, uh, through the first Adam, sin entered into the world. Through Jesus, the second Adam, righteousness entered into the world. Death came through the first Adam, the second Adam, the life giver life and resurrection so we see that through god's creation he created a man then eventually he created a woman and they both fell god expelled them from the garden but god did not leave us empty he did not leave us shepherdless. Uh, he did not leave us hopeless. Uh, God always have a plan A in terms of the reverse. Plan B. He always have a backup plan. And the backup plan was that as man fell through his love, through his love, his mercy, and his compassion, he created a backup plan. And that backup plan was the sending of his son, Jesus. In the book of John, it tells us in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word manifested itself and the word became flesh, and that flesh came and dwelt among us. Amen? So there's so much we can go into where our, or when it comes to Adam and Eve and the creation, but there's only such a limited amount of time that we can uh, 
do this and these are really expanded or expanded subjects so I'll stop right here I trust that you've learned something I trust that I was able to refresh you in some way and um, uh, we learned that here God always have a plan and uh, we can choose to be obedient or we can choose to be disobedient when God created Adam and Eve he gave them choice he placed them in the garden but they still had the ability of choice choose 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 ye this day whom ye will serve and they chose to be disobedient uh, they allowed the devil to deceive them and based on that deception uh, that was that reward and now through Jesus Christ we can have life and that we can have that life more abundantly so we had the second Adam came and gave us death and then we had we had the first Adam came and gave us death and now we have the second Adam that came and gave us life and life more abundantly amen so God bless you uh, thank you for being with us another Bible school uh, Bible study evening uh, whether you're on the air or whether you're uh, watching uh, via YouTube whatever the case might be uh, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ I trust that you would uh, allow him to come into your heart and 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 be your redeemer be your shepherd and he has the ability to lead and direct you into his paths of righteousness amen so I just want to thank God for this privilege and thank God for this opportunity and I uh, hope you and your loved ones you and your family would have a wonderful night as you ponder upon uh, uh, the Word of God and the Redeemer the Lord Jesus Christ amen Luke 6 38 says give and it shall be given to you good measure press down shake together and running over so you know what time it is it's time for you to give and in order to do that all you need to do is go to our church's website go to www fgany.org that's www.fgany.org and when you get to the web page all you have to do is click give and it will open up where you'd be able to pay your tithe your offering or give to any special ministry that you would normally give to so don't forget go to www.fgany.org and give